It's Ag Week at Utah State University. Coming up on ATV News. Outrage over Logan City's plans to redesign the canal system. We've got details for you. Utah State students create a cheesy way to power your car. And USU designers find a fashionable way to be eco-friendly. Utah State hockey bowled over Weaver State. And I'll tell you how soccer did too, coming up in sports. It's pretty sunny right now, but the awful haze is still in Cache Valley. I'll tell you when it's going to clear up in ATV weather. All this and more on this week's ATV News. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Brianna Bodily. And I'm Romina Nadakovich. Three people died when a canal broke in Logan three years ago. Now residents are raising complaints with the city's plan to redesign the canal system to avoid further loss. I talked to residents and city planners to find out just what these complaints are and what the city plans to do about it. Currently a freely flowing channel, Logan City is planning dramatic changes for this canal. The city began planning the project three years ago after a canal burst killed three people and city management was forced to shut it down. It's really impacted the irrigation users uh, that use water from that canal and so this project's intent is to restore that water back to the agricultural users and other shareholders of the canal. Original construction included plans to replace the canal with a giant underground pipe, leaving only two cubic centimeters of water running alongside in the river. That's equivalent to all of this becoming this. There's a big difference between having a stream in your backyard and having a big pipe. Um, that's where this uproar really began, um, was when... Uh, Original construction well, included plans ago, to replace the canal the with a giant underground pipe. Came in and it was a large pipe sticking up above the ground with a very small amount of water running along, something that you could hop over, something very small. Now, after hearing citizens' concerns... Well, what we did is we located our services Organizers have come up with a new plan. Running most of the water through three pipes covered by an access road, they leave enough room for a landscaped river to run alongside. But for some residents, this solution only adds to their dispute. We're frustrated by the fact that the canal company feel that we need to have a 20-foot easement here. And a 20-foot easement would essentially take it from our property corner, which is the canal bank here, to within inches of the corner of our house trees, patios, and even the corner of his neighbor's house. All areas Fife say are within the 20 feet required for the easement. This is only the tip of the iceberg in the complaints department. But despite concerns raised by residents, city officials are positive about the progress already made. I think what we've been doing is working together and partnering and coming to compromises um, on both ends to make something that works well for everybody. City officials say they hope to have the final designs mapped out by the end of the week. At that point, they will host forums to receive further public opinion. With gas prices so hot, you might think about a cheaper way to get around. Several of USU's colleges came together, did just that, and are getting around rather quickly after setting a world record last week at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Kelsey, what can you tell us about this? Well, you guys, this is extra exciting news since it's Ag Week. Agriculture students came together with science and engineering students to make this project a success. Not only did the students build the dragster from the ground up, but they also created the fuel which powered the dragster out of something I'm sure you have at home in your fridge. Cheese. Do you hear that? That's the sound of a student-built race car, which set a land speed record in its division just last week. The dragster, known as the Aggie Asalt Streamliner, clocked in at 64.4 miles per hour while driving across the Bonneville salt flats. At first, you might not think that's very fast, but there's a twist. This dragster is being powered by fuel made from cheese waste. We're the first school to actually run biofuels. Uh, in order to set the record. Uh, so that's, that's a big 
That's a big jump. That's a big push for Utah State University, so we can be really proud of that. The Dragster was built in just a few months, but scientists have tested these fuels for the last six years. I think that's probably the most impressive part of this whole project, is the fact that we've got students that are uh, coming across multiple colleges from agriculture, uh, from engineering, from the sciences, and that they're all working as a team. Although these alternative fuels are now just powering this small engine dragster, this fuel made from cheese waste may be powering your own car in the future. And for research assistant Michael R. Morgan, who also took the wheel of the race car, he hopes that the progress made might steer everyone in the direction toward more successful research. I think it jumps us to the front because now it, it puts a target for everybody else to shoot at because there are schools and companies all over the U.S. and throughout the world that are working on these same types of projects and we went out and we did it. And so for those that haven't done it or those that are close, hopefully it spurs them on and gets the research moving forward because that opens up opportunities for students here and students everywhere else. And this project is actually ongoing. The goal is to actually return to the race next year and power the dragster with an algae-based fuel. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks, Kelsey. Well, it's a dream many singers have, to perform the national anthem at a high-profile sporting event like the Super Bowl or the World Series. And while that may still be a dream for many USU students, they could get the chance to perform at, a, at an upcoming Aggie Athletic event. Tryouts begin tonight at 6 p.m. on the third floor of the D. Glenn Smith Spectrum. For more information, visit the Athletics website at www.utahstateaggies.com. Logan is known for its hills, and last week one student learned an important lesson about parking on those hills. It's not often you'll hear of both parties walking away from an accident like this. After a truck hit a scooter last Friday morning, that's exactly what happened. Neither the driver of the scooter nor the truck were at the scene at the time of the accident. Police say it's a case of poor parking by Jared Elliott, who left his car on a hill near campus. He says he put the car in gear but didn't put the emergency brake on. The car slowly began rolling back and hit the first the scooter and then another car uh, parked behind it. Where it was on a hill, I should have put the emergency brake on too, to be extra safe. I usually do common practice, but I didn't today. Sometimes I don't. And Obviously, I should have today. When you park, you need to pull up and make sure that your tires are blocked so that they will either go up against a curve if it starts to shift. Um, you can always put rocks or, or blocks behind your tires if you have standard transmissions as well as automatic transmissions if you're on a steep grade. And you always want to make sure that you use your parking brake. The iPhone 5 has been released and pre-orders will start shipping this Friday. New design features of the phone include a thinner and longer body as well as a redesigned connector, which means your existing accessories won't work with the new phone unless you buy a $30 adapter. And that has many people pretty upset. We decided to find out what Aggies think of the newest addition to the Apple lineup. In my opinion, all iPhones are kind of the same no matter if you have the 3G or the 3GS or the 4S or the 4, they all kind of do the exact same thing. The new cord, yeah, it's great that it's smaller, but all the accessories for your car and charging makes it kind of, kind of tough. I love Apple, and so I love all Apple products, so I'm really excited to see what they come up with next. I probably should have waited about two or three months from buying the last one I just bought, so spent some money and apparently I have uh, outdated technology now. Kind of bummer. I don't know, it looks cool, looks sweet, but other than that I don't really care that much. <laughs> Despite criticism, the iPhone 5 continues to break sales records. Coming up on ATV News, what does it take to make a 26.2 mile race run smoothly? And USU is working hard to create a new form of energy as hot as the sun. It takes a lot of hard work to run a marathon, but have you ever thought about the work that goes into putting one on? The top of Utah Marathon took place on Saturday morning and it ended at Merlin Olson Park. Logan City spends months planning for traffic control to make the marathon experience go smoothly for both the drivers and the runners. The cones that you see set up, um, this Logan City Street Department actually spent uh, early hours of this morning setting all those up and yesterday afternoon putting no parking signs up on some of the streets. 
So it, there's quite a few man hours involved in setting up and preparing in the downtime. It'll take two to three hours to pick up all the cones. I love the race up here. I've run the half marathon uh, two years in a row, and I, I won the half marathon three weeks ago. Um, and uh, you know, the, uh, the race directors invited me up to run the marathon, and um, it's just a great opportunity. It's a, it's a great course. It's beautiful up here. There's great crowd support. And um, after running the Boston Marathon, where it was like 85 degrees this year, I knew it would probably be about 40 degrees in this race. So it was, a, it was exactly what I uh, hoped for, a nice, a nice cool fall morning. And, uh, can't beat the weather up here. It's not time for ATV weather just yet, but Emily is live outside bringing us a sunny story. Emily, what can you tell us? Hey guys, um, it is a gorgeous day out here. It, the sun is shining, I'm enjoying the sunlight. And with the help of, with, of some USU researchers, we might be able to benefit from that sun a little bit more. This doesn't look like an oil rig or even a power plant, but it could be the answer to the world's energy crisis. It's called the tokamak, and its purpose is to do what the sun does. The sun runs off something called fusion energy, where we smash uh, atoms together and it releases energy. We're trying to take hydrogen, in our case it's easier to do with heavy hydrogen, and form helium or induce energy. Those hydrogen atoms are found in something called deuterium. It's not hard to find if you know where to look. These two bottles of water may look exactly the same, but they're not. One's your regular tap water, while the other is heavy water, which has deuterium. Deuterium is what makes the fusion react in the tokamak. And while the world is trying to create a tokamak that is bigger to contain this process, Utah State is trying a different approach. We've got this magnetic field that's holding it in, and this energy, this, this heat, that's trying to make it explode. And so what we want to do is get those balanced so that they're, you know, one-to-one. -one. They do this by using the machine in a regular microwave. This device here uses a magnetron, which is this portion of it, right out of a microwave oven. And so we shoot the microwaves into the machine to produce the plasma. Edward says that if he can get this to work, it could solve a lot of the world's problems then you've solved the energy problem, the, the uh, atmospheric pollution problem, global warming problem would no longer be there. Yeah, it looks like this is something to keep an eye on in the future, guys. It looks like it's going to be really cool. That bottle of water I was holding, it has the power to, to run your entire car. We just have to figure out how to harvest it. Back to you guys. You know what? I always knew water was very important. I just didn't realize how important. Spider silk is quickly catching worldwide attention and USC professor Randy Lewis is at the forefront of its research. He's been showcased on channels like BBC and the Disney Channel. But did you know the formula comes from coat's milk? ATV Steve Krass has the story. Spider silk is arguably the strongest material that exists. It's about three times stronger than Kevlar and it's stretchier than nylon. We have transgenic goats where we have inserted into them the gene for spider silk. So what we do is we get the milk and using filtration methods and some other chemicals we're able to extract our protein out of the milk. We take that protein, it comes in a powder when we have it all extracted and then we can basically just dissolve it in some type of solvent. Um, there's a couple different ones that we can use and then we're able to use this machine to make actual spider silk threads. So this is the spider silk um, and this is probably close to 60 yards of spider silk. And I was able to spin this in like a half hour. This is just plastic polymer that um, we've sandwiched pieces of spider silk in between. And we've actually shot one of these and a bullet, a um, low velocity bullet has bounced off of it. It's not like totally realistic. I mean, it could happen one day, but I don't see any Spider-Man going around shooting out spider silk out of their arms or anything like that. But it would be really cool. <laughs> We're talking a whole wide variety of different uses that this stuff has. And if we can harness the power that nature has already been doing, then we've got something that literally can change the world. Professor Lewis and his team expect to start product testing spider silk within 18 months. 
Feel like fashion shows are a waste of resources? Well, here at USU, students designed outfits for just the opposite. It was the biannual Recycled Fashion Show on Monday, led by clothing and textiles professor Lindsay Shirley, with themes from some of Utah State University's colleges, such as engineering, athletics, and business. They gave the contestants, like, a college that they wanted you to model after, so I chose business. So the skirt is like stocks going up, it's the stock trends. And then this is just a money shirt because business is money. Shirley's clothing and humanity class was responsible for designing an outfit for materials that have been reused or can be recycled, and worked hard to create something unique and stylish. The recycling materials, it makes you think outside the box, which is good, and then I really like that it actually supports the food program. The cost to enter was one can of food, and the show had an overpacked audience as well as canned goods, with spectators from all around the state to support USU and a handful of high school classes who also participated. Just to see all the different designs and stuff that the kids come up with, and there are always some great things that go on here. The point is to get the idea that you can reuse things instead of creating waste. So, Katrina Warburton, ATV News. The Recycled Fashion Show is put on every semester, so if you miss this one, the next show will be toward the beginning of spring semester. If you're looking for volunteer opportunities, the Volunteer Fair is the event for you. I stopped by to see what the programs have to offer. Students are signing up for volunteer opportunities at the Volunteer Fair. Girl Scouts, Relay for Life, and Run for Hearing were a few of the programs available. Volunteers got to address what their programs are all about. We host a whole bunch of blood drives a year here. The Blood Battle, which was the five-day blood drive we did in August. Uh, we do a two-day blood drive in November, a two-day blood drive in January, and probably one or two more in the spring. We do mentoring for kids that are um, like maybe at risk, but this year we're doing like a lot more just any kids in high school, we're going to the high schools and we're doing programs after school. Students came in between classes or any break to sign up and talk to the volunteers. There's always a need for volunteers, always need more volunteers. There's every organization needs more, especially with stuff like we have the Red Cross here, like blood drives, like they are always looking for more donors for blood and then like just every organization and the thing that's awesome about the service groups is they can really go with your schedule. And it's not hard to get started. All it takes is a few minutes to sign up for a program. Romina Nadakovic, ATV News. To learn more about where to sign up, go to usu.edu and search Service Center. Let's go ahead and take a look outside at your current weather conditions. Caesar Abbott will have your forecast right after this break. Late in the second. A goalie hit and fight put the Aggies down a man. But Ty Johns found Gary Higgs to give USU a two goal lead. The Aggies held off Weaver and saluted their fans, winning the game 3-1. to one. We still got some things to work on. We had a few mistakes. I uh, gave them a few opportunities, especially that one where he scored um, on that goal. We just weren't handling the puck as well as we should. We've got to be a little bit smarter there. But uh, overall, I'm really excited where we're at. And I'm really excited that Weaver is as good as they are. They revamped their team. They got 16 new guys, all junior A caliber. I'd say 75% junior A caliber. Um, they played great. They, it, we. Uh, it was, it was a tough. It was a tough game. It was a tough battle. I, I commend them wholeheartedly. They played very well. There's a lot of energy out there, and it was fun, like a uh, fast-paced game, and just get to throw the body around. Both games are fun too. Bryce played out of his mind. Um, best save of the game, probably 40 seconds left. So they, had, they had a great play, and he uh, he came up big for us. So we went down and scored and finished it off there. That was an unbelievable play by him. Yeah, he played his heart out. And you know, stood on his head, so we thank him for that and applaud him for that one. Hockey is off this week, but they will be back on the ice next in Ogden on Thursday. 
It was a big weekend for Aggie soccer. Number 23, the University of Washington, was in Logan to take on USU. The Aggies had plenty of chances, but they couldn't take the lead until the second half when Jen Flynn found the back of the net. A penalty kick tied the game for the University of Washington, and a couple more chances in overtime led the Aggies to finish with a 1-1 tie. This is the best result that we've had against the top 23 team, so it's going to go down in the history book, so we're proud about that. But quite frankly, we can't help but come away feeling like we should have got should have got a better result. So we've got a great, you know, we've got a great, um, we're bitter, we're bitter about it. It feels great, it really does, you know, to tie a team like that, and honestly they had one shot on goal, and that was their PK and they scored off of it, so good for them, but I mean, we had nine shots on the top 23 team in the nation, that feels so good, you know. Our attack. The girls are back on the field tomorrow against that school down south. The Cougars are ranked number 12 in the nation. Volleyball is also on the court tomorrow after being away for three weeks. Well, that's it for your Aggie sports. I'll see you next week. If you'd like to learn more about the ropes course, visit ropes.usu.edu. But first, let's tell us, we're going to tell you a little bit about it. Um, you don't have to go far to find something to do at USU. Go, 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 go. Thanks to the UCN Conference Center ropes course, there is now one more thing to do in Logan. The activities that we do here are designed around teamwork and communication. Um, most of the ones that we start with, we start with low elements. So their feet are actually on the ground. Uh, we do elements that the group gets to know us, as well as we get to know the dynamics of the group. And then we go from there. We do a tentative schedule of the elements that we plan on doing. You should come and check out the USU ropes course that is located down by First Dam. Some of the activities we do low are our nitro uh, circle, our alligator pit, things like that. And then what you see behind us is our high events. So we have um, wobbly log that you can see, our high V, um, our hourglass. And most of these are dynamic enough that we have the teams belaying them and not us in what's called a, a team belay. And then the one that we did today is our new one, our flying fox, where the person actually literally just takes two or three steps and the team pulls them 25 to 30 feet in the air. We had so much fun while we were here. We grew so much as a team and we got to do a lot of fun activities. Some of the games were really frustrating and there were times where I was like, oh my gosh, but by the end we were so happy to get it done and we, we were just able to communicate so much better and on the high stuff I was kind of nervous and wasn't sure if I was going to go up on it at all, but I ended up going and I'm so glad that I did because it was so much fun and so invigorating and such an adrenaline rush that I was really happy with it, the whole experience overall. At the end of the program, you get free tokens from some Aggie ice cream. Caesar Abbott. If you would like to know more about the ropes course, visit ropes.usu.edu. <laughs> well, thanks for watching ATV News. We'll see you all next week. I'm Bri and I'm Ramina Nadakovich.